Alright guys, this is Jason Sohalis Gary from Moving Lacbo Studio and right now we're going to shrink my screen really small because I'm here to introduce you to an awesome guest I got that's calling me right now. He just, just randomly called my house uh, and it is none other than Kevin Eastman. Oh, thank you, man. So glad to be here. And it's just weird. I just dialed this random number and here you are. I know. No kidding. Uh, I, I still can't believe it. So, um, so for my viewers who have no idea, like, who you are, first, shame on you. Um, but uh, go ahead and explain what exactly you're famous for and that kind of stuff. Well, um, 150 years ago, uh, my buddy Peter Laird and I created this uh, crazy, con crazy little concept called the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Um, and thanks to about a billion of you awesome fans out there, or not a billion, but a couple dozen, um, you helped uh, um, support our early creation, our early characters, supported those early comic books. And here I am 34 years later, still drawing comic books, thanks to those same awesome fans and uh, still uh, living the dream of being Jack Kirby and drawing comic books for a living, or trying to be Jack Kirby and drawing comic books for a living, because that was, that was my childhood dream. That, that was your childhood, actually. Uh, that's actually one of my first questions I actually, I actually kind of want to ask you, uh, man, which you already kind of answered already, but uh, who was your biggest inspiration on, like, becoming a comic book creator and that kind of stuff? There really was. There were many artists, you know, reading comic books. I grew up in a very small town in Maine, and reading comic books was really such a wonderful... Um, you know, escape or, or, or something I used to feed my imagination, you know, because it really was back in those days. I mean, I'm 55 now, so we're talking like late 60s, early 70s. You know, we just didn't have the, you know, the, the places that a hand-drawn comic book story could take you, past, present, future, whatever kind of adventure you could, you could imagine and, and write and draw it. Um, so there were a lot of comic books I liked, but it was really Jack Kirby, um, you know, especially a comic book he did called Commandy, um, The Last Boy on Earth. Um, it was very much sort of that, I'm sure you know what it is, I mean, it's uh, the Planet of the Apes sort of gone yeah. even further bonkers. Um, Planet of the Apes was one of the first movies I ever saw in a movie theater. Um, but it was Jack Kirby in, in particular, I really loved his dynamic style, his uh, uh, his way of uh, telling a story, and Commandy was just like, yeah, man, that was like, I remember telling my parents after reading uh, Commandy going, this is it, this is what I want to do for a living, I want to be Jack Kirby when I grow up, and of course they were, they were mortified because they... Assumed I'd be one of those kids that would never move out of the basement. <laughs> That's not a real job. You can't support a family drawing comic books. Oh, 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 trust me. I was actually one of those kids that actually never moved out of the basement. Like, my parents were like, you gotta go! <laughs> so, uh, something I actually really like about, you know, Team Eastman and everything, I like that... Oh, I actually really like that you and your wife like actually work close together. And also, uh, shout out to Fiona. Without Fiona, this actually would not happen. Um, it, and everything. How is it actually like working with your wife? It's something I can actually relate to. Oh, it's fantastic. It's a dream come true. And, and that you know, because we're both, um, you know, we both work very, very hard. And, and you know, when you sort of you know meet that person that you you pointed in the same direction. You know, we have you know an amazing 11-year-old son. We've got three wiener dogs, uh, two bad kitties, and we've got an, uh, an incredible job where, you know, not only do we get to go out and do 12 to I guess 12 to 15 conventions a year, which you know she organizes and plans everything. We love to get out and meet the fans, and plus travel to some pretty wonderful places and and, and also meet the fans. Um, but you know, it's still that we get to work at home, and I, I basically draw comic books for a living. Working with IDW on the ongoing TMNT series with that team down there is, is fantastic. So, um, but it's just a, you know, we sort of we're two peas in a pod. So if, you know, if you're lucky enough to have that kind of relationship, it's it's pretty awesome. It's pretty special. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah exactly. I know. Like I said, I know that feeling. Uh, my wife actually, she does all the work. I'm just a pretty face. That that like you know. <laughs> That's my line. I tell. <laughs> show and I go like you know she does all the work she's, she's the brains but I'm the real beauty here which you know is so far into the <laughs> oh, 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 oh trust me same thing over in this side of that <laughs> on the video call <laughs> something I actually want to bring up with uh, with your uh, with your fan page and everything you brought these new uh, things I've been selling out like crazy and those are your the toys the ones you've been signing and everything as soon as you put them up they just immediately sell out and everything Oh, uh, like, how is it, like, actually going through and, like, looking through those toys and everything? Oh, it's pretty awesome, because, you know, there's, there's, there's so many that, that you know, that I, that I had in my personal collection. Some, you know, a lot of them would be, like, um, you know, would have lots of them open. The, you know, the, my, the kids would come and cousins would play, you know, so I just had tons of these toys, and, you know, I don't get rid of anything. You should, my garage is complete proof of that. Um, but it was just that we thought it was a great idea that, you know, we, we have such an interesting thing, and knowing that, um, you know, if we could create something special, because we love that, 
you know, you know, there's there's always a, you know, from the very first issue of the Turtles, it was that you know, the first issue was only twenty five hundred copies, three thousand copies that made it out there, and, and I always felt that you know, um, fans that are collectors deserve real collectibles, whether it be signed and rare and, and whatever. So with the toys, we felt that this was a perfect thing to sort of put something out there just for the fans uh, that come and visit us and hang out on the site. You know, we don't put them on eBay and do all that stuff. It's just sort of something that we sort of keep home homegrown to our fan base and. Uh, it's been fun. I love the packaging and I like the whole thing. And I, you know, I sign every single one of them. And uh, so it's, it's a really unique collectible. Yeah. And I love that uh, clamshell uh, package that you have. That's actually something really cool. I was actually really lucky recently just to get one. I know they've been selling out like crazy. The one I actually really wanted was the, uh, the, the universal ones, like where there are like monsters, like Dante was Dracula, Raphael's uh, mummy. Uh, what, what was some of your like favorite, the, those, ra those radical toys from the nineties? It was actually the the Universal. The only one I probably edge up just above the Universal Monsters, which was by far one of my favorites, was the Star Trek ones, where they did each of the Star the Star Trek characters. I love that one. I think I, I think I've got Captain Kirk, Leo over here somewhere. <laughs> in my studio. But no, those were. But that was um. I just love that Playmates was was really creative and very inventive, and and not only you know all the different characters that you know uh, came to life not only in the toys, but we used them in a lot of the cartoon shows and things like that. But uh, there was some really really clever clever ideas in there. I love them. Right. So, so you know, you created a lot of characters. Layard, like, you know, helped uh, also create a lot of characters and everything. What was actually your favorite character that wasn't created by you or him? Like, because, like, the cartoons, like, created a bunch. Well, it was, you know, they were always sort of, you know, it was always, you know, even from the very beginning, you know, everything was based on, you know, the turtles wouldn't be turtles without Peter Laird, my brother, my, my brother-in-arms. Um, so many of those early designs, even like Bebop and Rocksteady, you can go back to the very first role-playing game we did with Palladium Books, and there's, there's the mutant rhino, the mutant warthog, you know, all these different um, things sort of sp sparked in from that. Um, a lot of the guys in the studio um, that uh, then came in to uh, uh, work on some additional Turtle uh, comic books, um, Ryan Brown and, and Jim Lawson, they brought characters to life like uh, Leatherhead and uh, um, uh, Rat King and things like that. I'm trying to think of um, one particular that stands out because it was always a, it was always such a group effort. You know, especially in the early days of the Turtles, we we all uh, Peter and I had full control over sort of what was done and what was what was not done um, in the toy line. So would, a lot of the artists would all sit around and would come up, you know, with our own character designs and, and submit them as possible ideas. Um, Probably the um, Krang, if I had to sing out one favorite that was really came out of the cartoon series, because um, Krang was sort of based on the Utroms in the right. original black and white series, but, you know, Krang from Dimension X and the two rock soldiers, that was something that, that singularly came solely out of the, um, uh, out of the, the cartoon series, and I love the, the versions of those. They're very cool. That's actually pretty cool. So I can't help but notice that uh, you have Usagi Ujimbo uh, on your hat, which like I, I've always like loved that series and everything. Right now the cartoon is doing the crossover uh, with it. We just had the one shot of the crossover and everything. Yo, what are some what are some like dream crossovers that you would love uh, to see uh, down the line? Well, that's awesome. You know, it was so nice to you know, especially at Comic Con this year because Stan Sakai started like literally when. Uh, <laughs> you know, the same year. I think Turtles, um, I mean, Turtle number one came out in May of 84, and I think Usagi and El, first appearance in El Beetle number one was like November of 84. And, and all those early conventions we would do, they'd kind of put the, the funny animal guys over in the corner, <laughs> over in the corner, it's like, we guys be funny animals. <laughs> um, but uh, so we'd always, that's how we get to be friends with Stan. And, and not only those early Mirage Studios crossovers, having him become part of the cartoon series and the, and the, uh, um, and the toy line and all that was a real treat to us to bring him back into the new Nickelodeon series, back into the toy line. But especially because my heart's always in the comic books, um, was uh, having a new turtle crossover, you know, the Psyche crossing over the IDW turtles. It's, it was a real treat and, and always great to see Stan. He's, he's such an awesome guy. Um, there's probably been many characters. I mean, one of the dreams was, you know, back in the day was I was always a huge Batman fan, you know, Batman, Daredevil, all those things. And having done a Turtles Batman crossover, off the list, dream come true, um, Turtles Ghostbusters we did at IDW, again, dream project, Beep, off the list, um, loved it. Um, I always thought it'd be fun to do a Turtles Commandy crossover, uh -huh. I was, you know, such a, a Kirby fan, uh, you know, and mutant turtles in a world of mutant animals, right. sort of, you know, they might not want to come back, I don't know, you know. Um, <laughs> 
But I was joking with uh, uh, my buddy Rob Liefeld uh, recently because I love Deadpool and, and stuff. And I said, wouldn't it be funny to do a Turtles-Deadpool crossover? <laughs> <laughs> the fans yeah. would probably be nice for that. I, I would love that. So. Oh, yeah. No, that, that would totally go nuts. You know, so um, also, you know, kind of almost kind of speaking of dead, um, like, you know, there's a new Kickstarter project you guys doing that you're doing mm -hmm. out there, uh, Drawing Blood. Uh, what? Yes. Um, go into the details of that one. Sure. Uh, Drawing Blood is a really exciting um, uh, campaign that we're doing, and, and this is my first Kickstarter, which is which is fun because I've you know been a huge fan of Kickstarter and, and supported a lot of uh, Kickstarter campaigns for other comic creators. I love it because to me it feels like it's it's going back to the very roots of where we started. I mean, we literally borrowed money from uh, family members to fund the first issue of the Turtles, so I really love that it, it, this crowdfunding uh, support thing. But I want to go back to the soul, you know, this creator, single vision, single idea, and then. Um, David Avaloni and I uh, were kicking around a few ideas, and I dusted off one I'd had a number of years ago about a character that, you know, I said, you look at the world of comic books, but nobody's ever done a character that literally lived and grew up and, and has had a success in the world of comics. Um, but I want to do it, like, really turn it on its ear. I mean, it's it's it has some elements of some uh, biography, you know, semi-autobiographical of me, but it's... This, that is kind of the smallest component because 34 years of being in the comic business, I've got stories, you know, usually stories that end up being told in the, uh, the, the back room of a convention or a bar at the hotel after a show. I've got so many stories from so many different creators I've had over the last 34 years as well as, um, you know, guys that have gone through some uh, pretty widely varied experiences, you know, right from Jack Kirby, you know, not really participating in the rights and his ownership of uh, and profits from his characters to uh, Steve Gerber to so many others. But I want to do this kind of um, uh, idea, and David Avaloni and I broke it down to, like, it's kind of a little Breaking Bad, a little Spinal Tap, a little uh, Amadeus, you know, that old Tom Hull movie, which I love, one of my favorite movies, and the old... Uh, comic book confidential thing, uh, but I just want to do a really interesting character making his way through the, the perils and pitfalls of, uh, uh, of uh, being a comic creator, which in our eyes, um, we are, you know, this this people that are, we consider the rock stars of comics, and if you look at the rock stars, and, you know, you see a young rock star, you know, imploding because he's got too much money, or she's got too much money too fast, or young sports stars, too much money too fast, and the different right. things, so I think there's a lot of, a lot of parallels. We're just... We're just setting it into in in my world and our world, which is the world of comic books. So I think people will really get a kick out of it. That actually sounds really cool. So you know, something you know, when you bring up Kickstarter, a lot of people want to like do the Kickstarter. The one thing that really interests them is like the rewards. What kind of rewards are you uh, planning to bring with it? This this one this one because we have um, basically the the adventures or the life of what we want to do with Shane Bookman. If we were doing say a monthly comic, we have three years of stories right now. Yeah. Um, but we want to focus on the first one. We call it Volume 1, which is going to be a trade paperback of uh, the first four issues plus some behind the scenes and that kind of stuff. But the reward, the coolest reward, and there are a whole bunch of rewards you have to check out. But the coolest reward is if um, we get the, uh, the, the, force, the first trade paperback, which is, again, the first four issues plus, um, uh, plus the behind the scenes. We're doing a 32-page, full-color, radically rearranged Ronin comic book uh, that you get for free. Um, oh, nice. So it's... So, you know... The artwork on the trade is Ben Bishop is the main artist. I'm doing uh, the flashback scene, so I think I've got about 15 pages total. Oh. Troy Little's doing some hallucinatory scenes, um, but Troy Little's um, I'm going to do the layouts, and Troy Little's doing the uh, uh, the finishes on the radically rearranged Warner Ragdolls comic from 1992. Nudge, nudge, wink, wink. Because remember, it's it's a completely fictional true story, <laughs> right? <laughs> <laughs> Um, and that's what's been fun. So that, that's one of the main rewards. But we got some really neat surprises. You, you need to check them out because I think people will be pretty thrilled. And, uh, um, you know, and again, it's I love the idea that, you know, even, you know, Shane may be a completely fictional true character. I mean, he literally exists in our world. I mean, I exist in Shane Bookman's world. Uh, everything you know and everybody you know in comics exists in Shane's world. He's just a, he's somebody that nobody knows the complete story yet. So that's the one we want to tell. Gotcha, gotcha. Now, I know you mentioned that you know you co-created Ninja Turtles and everything, but there's one big thing you didn't actually mention that you do, and that is you're the voice of Ice Cream Kitty. How is like yeah. doing that? <laughs> that was you know you know it's again uh, another one off the list. No, it was um, uh, good friends with Ciro Neely, the uh, executive producer and the main kind of creative visionary for the Nickelodeon series. 
uh, with many other talented people. It's a really uh, it's an army that has to bring those shows to, to life. And he wanted me, he said, hey, we want you to do a voice um, on the show. We'll come up with maybe some some cool superhero good guy or some really bad, bad guy, but we want you to do a voice. And, um, and he showed me once uh, this series of drawings that he had uh, based on the Michelangelo Christmas special in the original Mars series where Michelangelo finds a, a stray cat. But he wanted to turn it on its ear, and he said, this cat actually eats uh, ice cream with mutagen on it, becomes this ice cream kitty. <laughs> and I was like, dude, I want to be ice cream kitty. And he's like, no, 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 we'll come up with something better. And I said, no, no, I want to be ice cream kitty. And uh, so I, I fought for it. I got the role. And now <laughs> No, no, if I had to pick a role, I would totally want to be ice cream kitty. Actually, my wife loves ice cream kitty so much. She actually made a clay pot of him, actually. Uh, yeah, I'll have to send you guys the picture of that. Um, no, what I'm actually kind of curious, um, like, when you actually do the voice of Ice Cream Kitty, do they call you in for, like, each episode, or does Andrew Mar Romano, like, does she just make you do, like, all the voices at once and then, like, just try to fit them in? <laughs> yes, you know, uh, unfortunately, you know, there's a lot of new lot <clears throat> there's not a lot of nuances and uh, the different kinds of meow. So I think, the, I mean, the very first session I went in, I think they just they recorded, like, an hour or so of just every kind of meow or sound or anything you can imagine. I think there's more than enough for <laughs> Street Kitty's appearances and limited appearances and reactions. It was, it was so much fun. I love it. I really, that's one of the things that I've been, uh, I've loved so much is the fan reaction to this character has been so, so awesome. So I, w I wish they'd do like a, a big ice cream kitty plush tour. I know, I know that we've been wanting that too, actually. <laughs> yeah, we go right next to the ones you have in the back. Exactly, exactly. Because I, I know you guys actually like watch our channel and everything. We have our whole channel about like these turtle plushes. They actually talk to us and everything and annoy me while I'm trying to review talk about Ninja Turtles. I love it. I love it. <laughs> Thank you. All right, so we reached out to social media um, and we asked them to uh, ask some questions. So you want to hear some questions that they have for you? Sure. sure. I think we got a few more minutes. Hey, yeah, we got we got a few more minutes. So I'll I'll get like about like a couple questions in. Um. So, uh, Blazer Start asked, uh, what was the most rewarding project in your professional uh, career out of comics and why? Oh, man, you know, it's, um, you know, I'd say that besides having the most uh, awesome wife in the world, the most uh, amazing thing is, uh, you know, having an awesome son. He's, uh, our son Shane is 11, and that, those are, you know, no greater gifts than, you know, happy, healthy family and, and a family unit. Um, so those are the, probably the number one blessings. Um, you know, comics, I mean, just the fact that, you know, even if I could pick one project or another, it really comes down to one simple thing, which is um, the fact that uh, I get to draw comic books for a living. You know, from when I was, you know, eight, nine, ten years old, that's all I dreamed about it. Um, and the fact that, you know, thanks to the fans, the support, everything that and I, I really, I have the best job in the universe. I, I, I make no joke about about that, that I get to get up and, and sit down and, 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 and draw comic books and write these fantastic stories. And so whether it's, you know, turtles or drawing blood or, you know, uh, melting pot or underwear, the kids project, I did, you know, no matter what, in fact, that I get to create and I get to draw, that's, that's the gift. That's the greatest gift. That's awesome. Uh, Nicole wants to know, how do you feel about the latest incarnation of the Ninja Turtles animated series? Oh, the new Nickelodeon series. Yeah. Is, I, I adore it. It's uh, it's very, you know, just from Ciro and Nickelodeon's um, relaunch from, you know, having day one them coming out of the sewers. And it's just, it's it's quirky. It's funny. It's um, clever. The martial arts, I think, is, is fantastic. But I love that it's got, besides all the funny stuff that it has, it's got this dark side to it. Yeah, it I does. Mean, I know. It's sort of twisted, you know, some of the stuff <laughs> Especially like in the later seasons and everything. All right, I got one last question. This is a very important question. This is actually for my wife. She wants to know: Have you ever in, eaten uh, Iranian food? Have I eaten, ever eaten Iranian food? Yeah, Iranian food. Yes. No, I haven't. I've had you know, I've oh. been everywhere. Moroccan food and Thai food and my God, anything you can. I mean, I try anything because you know, uh, I you know, you can't see the rest of me, but I love to eat. <laughs> So, so, so before I got married, I used to be like really skinny, and now uh, I got like this. Um, just to let you know, she she says that when you come, when you and your family come next time in Atlanta, you guys are more than welcome to come here and eat some homemade Iranian food. 
Taylor, much, much appreciated. We look forward to it, and you can count on it. I would really love that. All right. I thank you so much for your time. Uh, this has been such a pleasure. Uh, thank you for everything you've done. Thank you for bringing Ninja Turtles uh, to us, and uh, thank you for being an all-around an awesome guy. I can't wait to see you again. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you very much. And just uh, behave yourself at Dragon Con, and just tell the fans that if they want to find Anything and everything about uh, um, uh, Drawing Blood, anything we do in Turtle Wise, just go to KevinEastmanStudios.com. That's the main website. Fiona, who you mentioned, they, she helps manage all that and makes right. that possible. They can find anything they want to know about any of these projects and where we're going to be and all that stuff on there. So uh, much appreciated. Thanks for your support. No problem. Thank, thank you. And uh, people who are watching this, uh, look in the description below for all the links to both the Kickstarter and uh, Kevin Eastman's site. Thank you so much, Kevin, again. Uh, till next time. All right, we'll see you.